Hello, classmates. What's going on? <laughs> well, let me start off by saying good evening to our esteemed faculty, administrators, family members, loved ones, and especially to you graduates for giving me this distinct honor of being here to be your student speaker tonight. Tonight is the end of one journey for many of us, and each of us had our own interesting travels to get to this destination. This school, perhaps more than any other school in CUNY, and maybe even the country, has more than its share of these interesting stories because of who we are as a school. Take a look around you. It goes without saying most of us are not bright-eyed, bushy-tailed youngsters getting ready to graduate and tackle the world with their first real jobs. Most of us are veterans of that real world. Many of us came back to school not so that we could learn to tackle the world better, but to better ourselves, to better our families, and in that way, to better the world. Now, most student speakers are gonna to wanna to speak about the future and what they hope their graduating class will accomplish. And I'm gonna do that also. But first, I wanna delve a little into our past and speak about what we've done and where we've come from. Like some of you, I am a high school dropout and school was not something I enjoyed. I was pretty directionless for a while, wasting my life away. That is until I found my passion working with people diagnosed with disabilities. I have to admit though, that for a high school dropout, I did all right for myself, but that pesky college degree required kept getting in the way of my advancement. So I went back to school very late in life and it wasn't fun. It was downright torturous. I agree with you, but <laughs> It was only because of my family and girlfriend's support that I finished my bachelor's finally in 2011, the same year I married my girlfriend and now wonderful wife, Christine. Hi, babe, wherever you are. So in 2011, I finally graduated from Brooklyn College, and I don't tell my students this, but it was with a 2.2 grade point average. Like I said, school was not ideal for me. And like Dean Peterson said, I took the 20-year plan to get my bachelor's degree. I say 20 plus because I don't want people to know how old I am, but that's besides the point. <laughs> well, the good part was I finally thought that I was done with school until one day my supervisor called me into her office and she said, do you know what CUNY SPS is? And I said, no. And she said, they have a graduate program in disability studies. And I said, that's nice. And then she said, we want you to apply for the program. And I said, yeah, all right, good luck with that. And I went home and laughed about it to my wife. You married folks know what happens next. <laughs> a short time later, I was sitting across from Dr. Bates, who is the director of the Disability Studies Program, as you just heard. And she wanted to know why I wanted to join the program. And I answered, my wife said I had to. <laughs> it's a little bit of kidding over there, but I did speak with my wife. And I have to admit that I was filled with self-doubt. But it was a means to better myself and to better our lives, so I applied. Let me say, Dr. Bates, thank you very much, because no one was more surprised than me when you gave me a shot. Okay. I remember that first day in class, though, feeling mighty apprehensive, if not downright scared. I felt that I had no business being in graduate school. There I was, looking at all the other students who all looked smarter than me, more confident than me, and maybe wanted to be there more than I did, and I wasn't sure what I was going to do. I remember a few students had laptops, which was kind of new to me. The student next to me, no joke, unfolded her notebook to the size of the desk, and she had three different colored pens. Three. I looked down at my two for 99 cent composition book, <laughs> and those tiny pencils I get from the bodega to fill out my Powerball slip. The stupid thing didn't even have an eraser. Like many of you, I remember thinking, what the heck am I doing here? And again, like many of you, heck wasn't the word I was thinking, but that's besides the point. <laughs> but like so many of you who've gone through life before returning to school, I learned to take things one day at a time. I also knew I wanted, if I wanted to get to where I wanted to go, I needed something more than a bachelor's degree. I also needed some, to prove something to myself and to my family because of some of the stuff I did or didn't do as a, as a kid. I went into the world thinking I was a hotshot. I got knocked around in backbreaking, low paying and dead end jobs. But hey, I was an adult. Well, we all know what being an adult sometimes means. It means struggling for a buck only to have to give back 30 cents to Uncle Sam. 
then another 40 cents for rent, 30 more cents for food, and another 50 cents for all of life's expenses that seem to pop up to support yourself and your family. Now all these youngsters out here, they're saying, hey, that's a buck 50 for every buck you earn. Yeah, no kidding. That, my friend, is the real world. It's also why I owe so much to my wife, my parents, my sisters, my friends. They supported me all they could, but they could only do so much, which is another reason why credit card companies also love us adults, because sometimes being an adult means being 25 grand in debt and paying the minimum every month if you can scrape together the minimum. Yep, like many of you, I took a lot of lumps in life, but I'm not bitter, maybe a little bit better. But those lumps made us adults. Those lumps taught us responsibility. Those lumps taught us the importance of an education and made us ready to be students. We saw how having an education can open doors. We know education can help us get a better paycheck, and we know that education is something that we can be proud of. And thank heavens that we finally learned these lessons there was a school like CUNY SPS to help us support us non-traditional students. <laughs> now this school understood that most of us aren't looking to get our first real jobs in the real world. Many of us already have jobs. We have families, we work, we come home, we do our homework, we do our papers, and some of us even have to go to a classroom. To try I say to Dean Mogulescu, and Dr. Bates, thank you for making my program online. <laughs> now, like I said, this school did everything I could think of to support us, and Dean Peterson mentioned my 20-year plan and how I decided to come back here after finishing my bachelor's. And in less time than it takes to tell, I did get my triple crown, my advanced certificate in disability studies, my MA in Disability Studies, and today, along with my classmate, Amanda Smith, who's out there somewhere, the first two graduates in this new MS in Disability Services in Special Education program, the Triple Crown in Disability Studies. I also want to mention one more thing about CUNY in general and SPS in particular. We are a school with a deep and rich history of serving the underserved and immigrants from across the world. Just look at the cultural makeup of the folks on this stage and in this audience. Immigrants throughout American history have always helped to make America great. And like all of you, I am proud to be an American. And I am equally proud that my sisters and I are the children of immigrants. Before... <laughs> now, before I go on, I, I know we all have people we want to thank as well we should. So I'd like to make, take this opportunity to make some mentions for myself. I'd like to thank my dad, Poo Ki Chan, who is no longer with us and yet always with us. My mom, Ying Hua Chan, who supported me despite the many times I disappointed her. Thank you, mom. My sisters, Annette and Annie, my nephews, Tavio and Kai, my wonderful brother-in-law, Dom, my friends and classmates, too numerous to mention. And I want to thank my friends and colleagues from Hunter College who came here today to watch me graduate. Thank you, guys. One more person, my wonderful wife, Christine, who makes all things possible. When I met her, she was pursuing her PhD and I had my GED. I expressed my regrets about not finishing. Thank you, babe. When we were dating, I told her that I regretted not going back to finish and she didn't say, you can go back to finish. She said, you will go back and finish. And here I am now. Thank you very much, babe. Now tell me I'm going to win the Powerball. <laughs> well, SPS Duke graduates, I told you where we came from. Now let's talk about where we're going and what we're going to do. Unlike traditional students, we're not looking to go out and tackle the world because when we came to SPS, we were no longer on defense. We forced the world to stumble on our one yard line. Every test or assignment we finished and passed was yardage gained. Every semester passed was another first down for us. It wasn't always pretty, and there were some semesters where I thought I fumbled so bad or dug myself into a fourth and 30 situation, like this last semester, for instance, but yet, here we are. And thanks to this school, thanks to our quarterback, Dean Mogulescu, and the great SPS team behind us, who opened up the huge hole through which all we have to do is take this ball and walk through and win this game. That's all we have to do, classmates, Teammates, friends, I'll see you all in the winter circle of life. 
Thank you and good night.